Before I get started, I just like to point out where you can find the list of hotkeys while we're 3D modeling. If you click M, you'll see this list come up and this shows all the different hotkeys for modeling. So M stands for modeling and it's the hotkey to find um, all the other hotkeys to model with. So M is just the first letter. So if you wanted to, let's find an example. Just going to add some segments and change this to be lines. Maybe we'll do constant shading with lines and I'll make this editable. This is the editable button. You can also click C, which is the hotkey for that if you want to know it. So here, if I have, I, I can choose to either select points, edges, or polygons, and that will choose what I'm affecting while I'm 3D modeling. And I click edges. Now we're going to be able to click on edges, points, click on points, polygons, click on polygons. But it also controls when you click M, what you're controlling. So if I click ML, which stands for loop, now we're creating paths with edges. So by using the edges, we're creating loops. Versus if I had this open, it would do it with points. If I have that selected up there. And the same thing goes with U but U brings up the list for if you'd like to select something. So U brings up the selection list. So if you ever forget one of the hotkeys for while you're 3D modeling, there's a ton of them. You can just pull up these lists and find it really quick. So I just want to show you that before we start modeling so that you aren't totally lost and feel overwhelmed with all the hotkeys. You don't need to have them overwhelmed. Um, I mean, you don't need to have them memorized, but if you do this enough, you will eventually have them all memorized, or at least the ones you use the most often. So I hope you find that helpful and I'll delete this cube and we can begin 3D modeling our car. I'm not going to worry too much about the scale at this point. I just want to get down the basic form. And once I have down the basic form, I can do things like adjust the dimensions. I'm going to drop this cube into a subdivision surface. I'm going to turn on our quick shading with lines so that I can see what's really happening. I'm adjusting the segments to make sure that they're good for modeling. And if I'd like to turn on and off the subdivision surface, I can do that by pressing the Q key. So the first thing I need to do is make this cube editable. to select these two polygons here, press T, really draw them out a little bit. I know you may be thinking, how the heck is this going to turn into a car, but you will, you will soon find out. Let me select all of this. wider body. I'll click ML to be able to add some poly loops in here. We're going to want a poly loop down low. 
calling loop up high. So poly loops I use in order to control how curved an edge is. The closer poly loops are together, the less of a fillet or curve you'll have there, the sharper the edge, and the further they are apart, the larger that curved surface will be. So my goal is to shape how this car looks. Here I'm adding in a wheel. I'm shaping how this car looks by just controlling where the points and poly loops are. And this is called box modeling because you start with a cube and you use poly loops and subdivision surfaces in order to shape it into a more organic form. So I'm thinking of these two poly loops, this one and this one, as being where the car door would go. The windshield would start about there. So right about here. This will be where the second wheel goes, right over here. So I'll add an offender. I made it a little bit higher up than the back wheel. Looking in the side view really helps you figure out what the profile of the object is that you're 3D modeling. In, in this case, a car, it's a good place to start 3D modeling from the side view. In a minute, I'm going to switch it back to the front to start 3D modeling from there. Sometimes it makes it easier to select the vertices you'd like to by looking in all four views at the same time. You can switch in and out of one view by clicking on the middle mouse button. I want to give this car a similar look to a shark, so that's some of the inspiration. So while 3D modeling, I really just am only using a few tools for this. And you can see all the modeling tools by pressing M and it'll actually give you the hotkeys for each. What I mainly use is ML and that allows you to add in a poly loop or MB lets you bridge together two different edges and MW lets you create an inset. But a lot of these are just the same buttons. Selecting these polygons and hitting MW in order to inset them. And you can see that that created an inset right here. Then I'm just able to move around some of the vertices to make it the shape I'd like for the grill. I dropped in a couple primitives of tubes just to use as placeholders for the wheels to help me imagine it before I actually model those in. Empty allows me to extrude and right here you'll see that I used UL. U is the hotkey for all the selection buttons. Once I hit U I can click L afterwards for poly loops. So I selected a poly loop there and then pressed NT to extrude. Here I'm clicking MG to bring out the iron tool and that pretty much just smooths out your geometry. So I'm just smoothing out where I had extruded. At this point I'm going to adjust the headlights and just make some small changes. The form isn't quite what I'd like it to be yet, but it'll get there with time, so it's a matter of patience. That's a lot of pushing around vertices and seeing what happens and making small adjustments until you're happy with it. I really want this car to look mean. Part of making a car look mean is in the headlights. I feel like they look a lot like eyes, so you can make the headlights look really kind of mean. And then the grill also plays into that. The grill is the mouth. Going to add in a couple poly loops just to sharpen it up there, as you can see. When I 3D model, I like to start off with 
um, the most basic shape. And then as I get further in the process, I start adding more details, as you can see here. It really takes some time to be able to add those details in, and those should come last because if you don't have the basic shape and once you start adding in details, it will be very hard to make adjustments. So make it the small adjustments last. It's a very similar process to sketching. If you've ever taken an art class where you've had to draw, you start off with the basic shape first and then later on you can add in the small adjustments and really make sure that those small details are there. But that should be when you hold off for as long as possible to do because if you start doing those early it's going to be really hard to make adjustments. I had dropped this car into a symmetry object and that way I make sure that this car really is symmetrical because otherwise it's very easy to accidentally move a vertice on one side and then move the wrong vertice on the other and before you know it you have an asymmetrical car and it's really annoying. So I like to drop these into a symmetry object. It makes it much easier to make it small adjustments and you can have the peace of mind of knowing it's the same on both. It also comes in handy for 3D modeling people. If you want to make a really realistic person, maybe after 3D modeling it as a symmetrical object, at the end you can add some asymmetry to it because everyone has a little bit of asymmetry. It's just a it's just a part of life. There are no symmetrical people out there. Here I was kind of thinking of what if this car had nostrils because it kind of looked like a shark to me, but then I changed my mind. <laughs> I'm making small changes to the headlights. At first I wanted them to be round, but then I like the square look. It's a very boxy kind of car, but I wanted to, of course, be boxy in a cool way. Um, I feel like cars nowadays are very, very round and organic, but earlier on they were much more boxy looking, which was kind of cool, like in the 1970s and things like that. They had more hard edges. A lot of product design was like that then. Like even if you look at boom boxes and things like that, they had some harder edges then. And then things became more organic later. That seems to be more in the, the modern era where we're making smoother products. More organic products. It's easier now with new manufacturing techniques. Here my poly loops were a little bit messed up so I was trying to figure out what went wrong. So it was just a lot of trial and error at this part of the video. Here I'm dropping it down in order to have a place for the seats to go. Modeling those in. 
I didn't feel like I need to model in all the details like where the pedals are because for what I'm using this car for you aren't really going to see the interior too much you'll just see a little bit of it through the windshield but I need to have those basic shapes in there anyway so I added in seats and a steering wheel but I didn't really need to worry about texturing on the seats, like what kind of leather it is. I could go back and do that in the future, perhaps. Um, I just used a torus for the steering wheel, and then I grabbed some polygons and extrude them. Here is trying out some different things with the wheel. At this point, I'm going to work a little bit on the wheel, adding in some loops. I'm just working on refining the model a little bit, adding in some more details to the steering wheel. I'm also adding in the roof. I made it separate from the rest of the car. Once I had all of this in order, I actually decided to add some paint to the model in order to see how the light is reflecting off of it and that gave me the opportunity to start refining the the surface a little bit more because i could see what was working and what wasn't working in terms of surfacing and i found that really helpful i added in a car door and some other small details and then i fixed some of the surfacing that i saw that was wrong on the front in order to reach the final rendering that i have now I hope you found this helpful and that this will help you 3D model your own complex objects just starting from a simple cube.